Our next session this morning will be the 2017 NSGC State of the Society Address. For this session, please use the verification code 8669 showing on the screen behind me. I now have the pleasure of introducing Mary Freivogel, the current NSGC President, to give us the 2017 State of the Society Address. As president, Mary serves as the primary spokesperson for the organization and in collaboration with the NSGC board and executive office, oversees the NSGC committees and other work groups. Join me in welcoming Mary to the stage. Thank you so much, Renee. State of the society. When I think about the state of NSGC, two words come to mind, celebration and gratitude. We have accomplished so much in 2017 so far, and I'm so incredibly proud of that. This is my time as the spokesperson for NSGC to brag about how awesome we are and to reflect on our accomplishments and celebrate them. And even more importantly, to express heartfelt gratitude to those who have contributed to our success. Because without you, we wouldn't be us. So for those Jimmy Fallon fans out there, thank you, genetic counselors, for helping patients get into their genes. Thank you, genetic counselors, for reminding us that DNA usually checks itself before it wrecks itself. Thank you, genetic counselors, for helping people understand that stop codons are sometimes nothing more than nonsense. And thank you, genetic counselors, for supporting NSGC. As of August 31st, we were over 3,600 members strong. More than 85% of the individuals in our profession are members of NSGC, which is spectacular. Regardless of which specialty we focus on or what organization we work for, there are some really fascinating challenges and opportunities that we all face as a community. NSGC serves to remind us that our commonalities transcend our differences. Your membership dues help to fuel our mission. This graph shows that we are a very healthy organization financially. The green line shows our target level of financial reserves, and the blue line shows our actual financial reserves. The bottom line is that we are being very responsible stewards of the money that you and or your employers invest in NSGC. And in fact, since we are so far above our target reserves, the board is consistently looking for ways to strategically in invest money in order to make strides for our profession. If you want to hear more about NSGC's financial health and other topics relevant to the membership, please join us for the online business meeting in November. Last year was our first year using this new format and it was a huge success. It allows broader participation from genetic counselors throughout the United States and other countries. Email communication will be coming soon, including a link to register. If you have things you would like to discuss while you are here in Columbus, please find members of the NSGC leadership or staff. And in order to help you do that, I'm going to show you what they look like. Um, and of course, take a moment to thank them for all they do for our organization and our profession. Our board is responsible for setting the strategic direction for NSGC, the big picture of where, what, and why. It's this group of people who are responsible for representing our diverse membership as we look for opportunities, monitor threats, and try to anticipate where our organization needs to be to best support our membership. They are chosen by a very careful and thoughtful nominations process. These are our current officers. And here are our directors at large. Mary Ann, Katie, and Aaron will finish their terms at the end of the year, as will Janine and Monica, which allows us to welcome our incoming board members. They are all experienced leaders within an SGC, and we are excited to see them flourish in these new roles. And speaking of the board of directors, I am extremely humbled to be able to introduce a very special guest who is in this room with us today. She is a pioneer of NSGC in our profession. 
She is the kind of woman that many of us aspire to be. She was courageous and fearless as she helped to establish our organization, give it a name, and serve as its very first president in 1979. Please stand up and give a very warm welcome to Ms. Audrey Heimler. Audrey, you are an inspiration to me and to so many others, and we are so grateful for your contributions. Any successful organization not only has a strong strategic direction, but also a strong group of volunteers who determine how to accomplish the outcomes with the available resources. Our committees are so very important, and we are ever grateful to the chairs and vice chairs that lead those committees. Without you, NSGC would not be NSGC. Please join me with a round of applause for these individuals. Please also help me to recognize the leaders of our varied special interest groups, or SIGs. We are so happy they do what they do, as they offer community, connection, and resources for genetic counselors with interests in particular areas of specialty and practice. And of course, the NSGC staff. Trust me when I say we wouldn't be half of what we are today without these individuals. They are true partners in every sense of the word. Now that I've gotten my thank you notes out of the way, let's move on to a very exciting announcement. I'd like to ask Melanie Myers, the chair of the JEMF advisory group, to join me on stage. How many of you have heard of the Jane Engelberg Memorial Fellowship, or JEMF? Terrific. Well, the JEMF was founded in 1991 to honor the memory of Jane Engelberg and her commitment to the field of genetic counseling. The purpose of the JEMF is to support the professional and research initiatives of board-certified genetic counselors and students. I just click that. Thanks. This year marks the 25th anniversary of JEMF funding. Since its inception, the JEMF has awarded over $2 million in funding to genetic counselors. If you've been a recipient of the JEMF Full Member Award, can I ask you to please stand and remain standing? If you have been a recipient of a Student Research Award, a student manuscript award, a travel award, or any other JMF funding. Can I please ask you to stand and remain standing? And if you have served on the JMF advisory group, can I please ask you to stand and remain standing? Thank you for your contributions to the knowledge base and the practice of the field of genetic counseling. Your work has impacted everybody in this room. But, but don't sit down yet. So stand back up. So funded annually by the Engelberg Foundation until 2017, I am thrilled to announce that the Engelberg Foundation has permanently endowed the JEMF with a gift of $1.5 million. So now you can sit down or dance in the aisles, whatever your preference. So this gift ensures the ongoing support of genetic counseling research and the advancement of the practice of genetic counseling. Mr. Engelberg couldn't be here today, but he sent a letter which he asked me to read to the membership. Dear Melanie, I regret that my schedule does not permit me to attend the celebration of the 25th anniversary of the Jane Engelberg Memorial Fellowship but I hope you can share my thoughts with the attendees on this occasion. Over the last quarter century, the publications resulting from the scholarly research conducted by the recipients of the Jane Engelberg Memorial Fellowship have had an important impact on the practice of genetic counseling. 
Recipients of the fellowship have also gone on to become leaders in the field and have occupied leadership roles in your national society. Many have also volunteered their time and talent by serving as members of the Fellowship's Advisory Committee, which reviews the applications for the fellowship and selects the annual winner. This virtuous cycle of effort and achievement has made the Jane Engelberg Fellowship the most prestigious award in the field of genetic counseling. The Engelberg Foundation was founded in 1991, a few years after Jane's death in 1988, and the creation of the Jane Engelberg Memorial Fellowship was one of our very first projects. It is also one of our most successful. I cannot thank all of you enough for your incredible efforts in creating that success. It has been an honor and a privilege to support this program. Now is the right moment to make sure that the fellowship continues as a permanent program of the National Society of Genetic Counselors. The new permanent endowment provided by the Engelberg Foundation will fund the fellowship program for the foreseeable future and gives the National Society and the JEMF Advisory Committee full control over both the management of the fellowship and the endowment. Jane's love of her work and her professional growth as a genetic counselor gave her the motivation to embrace life each day for more than 18 years while living with the physical and emotional consequences of being treated for a terminal illness. She would be so proud to have her name permanently linked to the highest level of achievement in the profession she loved. So am I. It has been the perfect way to honor her life. Thank you so much for making this mem memorial so meaningful. Sincerely, Alfred B. Engelberg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melanie, for your leadership on this group and heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Engelberg for his incredible generosity. I'd now like to make some announcements related to the Journal of Genetic Counseling, which is such an important thing to our profession and our organization. Starting in 2018, the journal will have a new editor. I'd like to congratulate Christina Palmer and invite her to join me on stage. Christina, we are so happy to have you in this role, and we wish you nothing but the best in this new adventure. Next, I'd like to invite our current Editor-in-Chief, Bonnie Leroy, to join us on stage as well. She will be announcing the Best Paper Trainee Awards for 2017. Are there others? Their names, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be next. Okay. Thank you. So I, this, is, this is one of the most fun things I've been able to do um, as editor. And this is the first year of the Journal of Genetic Counseling Best Paper Trainee Award. Um, this was uh, just started in uh, last year, actually. The work started last year in a committee comprised of Wendy Ullman, who chaired the committee, Christina Palmer, Robin Grubbs, Cammie Schneider, and Angie Mengel um, chose two papers whose work was completed as part of a degree um, and published in the Journal of Genetic Counseling. The first paper um, goes to, the first award goes to Caroline Rung Elsis, and here to accept the award on her behalf is her program director, Ann Greb, who is where? There. And I should say, the awardees, are given a beautiful award and also $500 um, that was funded by our publisher, Springer. Thanks. Thank you. Right. And our second awardee is Sabrina Williams, who couldn't be here today. Um, and her, so accepting on her behalf is her program director, Janice Edwards, um, I should say, uh, from the University of South Carolina. Everybody knows Anne is from Sarah Lawrence. I should have said that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Um, and I'd like to ask Bonnie to stay up here for a moment as she deserves some love from those of us in this room. 
Bonnie has been the editor of the Journal of Genetic Counseling for 10 years, and she has done a phenomenal job. The journal has come so far under her leadership, and we are very grateful for her. We'd like to present her with this plaque and give her a huge round of applause. Many, many thanks to you, Bonnie. You have made an immeasurable impact. Your impact factor is very, very high. <laughs> it's a journal joke. Um, all right, so let's talk about NSGC's strategy and focus for the year. Um, when we gathered as a board in January, we talked about what we thought was important and what would set NSGC up for success given the current genetics and genomics landscape, which is constantly changing and evolving. I took notes during our discussion, and these are the words I heard. We've used these themes as a board to guide our discussions and activities this year, and I'm proud to say that we've made great strides. We've been bold and brave, and I've seen us all stretch ourselves outside our comfort zone, and I can attest to the fact that that is indeed where the magic happens. But for those of you in the room, you're probably saying, that's great and all, but how does this relate to me? In the words of Janet Jackson, for those of you who know she, who she is, what have you done for me lately, NSGC? Lots, and I'm going to pick out a few highlights to share with you during the time I have left today. First, we listened. Earlier this year, NSGC embarked on an important project called a Member Needs Assessment in order to ensure the continued relevance and value of NSGC to our ever so important members. Guess what? The results of this assessment showed a strong alignment between what our members tell us they need and the strategic direction and priorities of NSGC. Common interests include things like career paths, and opportunities for advancement, defining who we are in an era where the time-tested identify and refer model may no longer work, the expansion and evolution of genetic counseling training programs, and the need to support patient-facing genetic counselors with licensure and CMS recognition. The striking overlap between member needs and NSGC's strategic plan is a sign of a healthy partnership and reinforces that we are headed in the right direction. I'm convinced that when we are all on the same page, the story we write together will be infinitely more impactful, compelling, and purposeful. So now that it's clear that NSGC is listening, let's move on to celebration. What do we have to celebrate? First, NSGC continues to be a source of support and education to our profession, both about topics that are relevant to all of us, as well as topics that are specific to our areas of specialization. In 2017, we will offer six member webinars, and of the four that have been presented so far, we've reached 1,000 viewers. Topics have included things like the role of genetic counseling assistance and the global reach of our profession. We have two member web webinars yet to come this year. Additionally, we've offered 36 different SIG-sponsored webinars that have reached over 3,700 individuals. NSGC also tirelessly works to support genetic counselors in patient-facing roles to ensure adequate reimbursement for their services and salaries that match the value they provide. We continue to support licensure efforts throughout the United States, and as someone who is working on licensure in Colorado, I can speak to the incredible resources and expertise that NSGC provides. 23 states now issue licenses for genetic counselors, and an additional 20 have efforts underway. And of course, we continue our efforts related to a federal bill that would allow for CMS recognition of genetic counselors. Please attend the Professional Issues panel tomorrow to hear more about where we stand with this important initiative. And I have to give a special thanks to John Richardson for spearheading this effort on behalf of NSGC. He is doing a tremendous job and we are so grateful to him. 
We also partnered with the Advisory Board Company, which is a consulting group that provides resources and information to more than 250,000 leaders in more than 4,400 healthcare organizations. A genetic counselor named Sandy Brown brought this opportunity to NSGC. She and I worked on a blog that was published, as well as a webinar that was attended by almost 90 individuals throughout the country, most of whom were administrators for oncology programs at various hospitals. We shared some best practices with regards to cancer genetic counseling and also set the stage for the value that employers should place on genetic counselors as they are trying to recruit them, hire them, and retain them. We talked about things like an, providing an attractive salary and benefits package, a robust job description, and ample opportunity for career advancement. We developed and provided resources to the attendees of this webinar on these topics. Based on the urging of another member, my friend Stephanie Cohen, we took these resources and posted them on our website on a new area called employer resources. We plan to continue to add to this section of the website in hopes of helping genetic counselors to advocate for compensation, benefits, and advancement opportunities that they so wholeheartedly deserve. Another thing I'm incredibly proud of so far in 2017 is how we were able to capitalize on opportunities as they were presented. When 23andMe received FDA approval to release genetic health risk information, our PR firm PCI helped us to draft a statement. They sent it to strategic media contacts and offered an SGC as an expert. The outreach resulted in six high-profile interviews. As we advocated for genetic counselors in these interviews, we realized that we were driving consumers to a findageneticcounselor.com website that didn't adequately identify genetic counselors who were willing to see patients with 23andMe results in hand. We quickly updated the tool to accommodate this additional level of detail. Additionally, we made the tool more user-friendly with regards to finding a genetic counselor in person versus by telephone. All of these changes were made in a very short period of time and have resulted in patients being able to find a genetic counselor with increased sensitivity and specificity. We also reacted fairly quickly when Andy Fawcett came to us with the observation that genetic counselors should play a more active role in the NIH All of Us research program. We utilized Andy's contacts and expertise to begin a dialogue with this group who has shown great interest in including genetic counselors in various initiatives. In fact, our next member webinar will be a presentation from the All of Us team about the role that genetic counselors can play in this important initiative. And when Kate Wilson emailed us in March about some discussions that were occurring at a breast cancer related meeting regarding the shortage of genetic counselors and the necessity of circumventing us due to long wait times. We worked together with Andrea and Flora and the Cancer SIG on a survey to get a quick picture of the landscape. While there were a wide range of responses regarding the wait time for patients who schedule an appointment through the normal channels, 98% of respondents said they are able to accommodate new patients on a stat basis. And of these, 80% can accommodate these patients in one to three days. This is great news because it tells us that regardless of the backlog for a routine patient, the vast majority of us are doing a great job accommodating individuals who need to see us. We are working on a strategy to share these important data points with some key professional organizations and thought leaders, especially those who are vocal about long wait times and the genetic counselor shortage. Additionally, we will be developing a list of talking points that will summarize this data so that members can use this when they encounter similar criticism in their own communities. I know it can be frustrating to those of us in the trenches to see referrals directed elsewhere due to unfounded perceptions about our accessibility and efficiency. NSGC's goal is to advocate for our profession and share a compelling story about why we should be involved, directly or indirectly, in the delivery of genetic services to all patients. In the end, I have no doubt that when we practice at the top of our scope, collaborate with other healthcare providers, and think outside the box, our services will be accessible to those who need them. And although we are more accessible than many think, we certainly understand the workforce challenges and the need to think outside the box as more and more individuals will be needing genetic services. 
Addressing the workforce shortage is extremely important, especially given the lag in cloning technology. We continue to work with the other genetic counseling organizations on the execution of the workforce strategic plan that has been so carefully and collaboratively developed. And if you've been paying attention, you will notice that I've been doing a lot of name dropping, mentioning members who spoke up, and as a result, an SGC actually did something about it. I want you all to know that your ideas, perspectives, opinions, and values matter to us. Please speak up if you have something productive to share. An easy way to make yourself heard is to email us. You never know. You might find yourself mentioned in next year's State of Society address. Let's move on to public relations. We are so grateful to PCI for helping NSGC to insert ourselves in so many important conversations. Here's a quick video snapshot of what we've accomplished so far in 2017 as partners. permeates everything. Um, there won't be enough genetic counselors to see every patient who gets genetic information. on the CNBC interview, they actually had me as the NSOG president, which we laugh because I say it's the National Society of Original Gangsters. <laughs> it's like my favorite joke. Um, <laughs> so PCI not only responds to media requests, but monitors current events and stories in the news. When something relevant comes up, they reach out proactively to their media contact contacts with expert alerts. PCI's efforts have resulted in 50 total media placements this year with an audience reach of 400 million people. Thanks to PCI, NSGC is now seen as an expert source who can explain complex genetics topics to consumers in a way they can understand. We've been featured in countless news outlets, including the ones listed on this slide. We are now being approached by reporters for high profile stories. The genetic counseling profession was featured in Parade Magazine as Heather Zierhut so bravely shared her job and salary in their What People Earn issue. And I was proud to speak on behalf of NSOG to CNBC as part of their Where the Jobs Are series. In our PF PR efforts, we continue to drive traffic to our consumer website so that individuals can learn about genetic counselors, the value we bring, and how to find us. About 56,000 users have visited this website over the past year. Additionally, we've begun, begun offering consumer webinars on various topics, which has been extremely successful. We've offered a total of six webinars so far with almost 1,500 total views. We see a noticeable jump in visits to aboutgeneticcounselors.com after these events. We are so grateful to the NSGC members who have given their time and expertise as presenters for these webinars. 
Our patient blog series is another successful part of our consumer website with about 4,700 total hits so far this year. We launched a new series of blogs recently where patients share their stories about their genetic counseling experience. Many, many thanks to the patients and genetic counselors that are willing to share their experiences and expertise in this format. And this year we launched a new program to connect a group of individuals in the genetics field who can work together to help raise awareness about the role of genetic counselors and promote their shared interest among their networks. We identified 15 influencers with unique perspectives and knowledge in the field of genetics and genetic counseling and asked them to become official ambassadors of the profession. Thanks to their enthusiasm, the NSGC Digital Ambassador Program was born. Our class of 2017 includes genetic counselors, researchers, patient advocates, and others with specific interests in the genetics field. We encourage you to follow the NSGC gene pool hashtag on Twitter to contribute to the conversation on genetics and the genetic counseling profession. And as I announced yesterday, NSGC has led the charge to designate an annual Genetic Counselor Awareness Day. It will be held on the second Thursday in November, which will be November 9th this year. This is your opportunity to highlight your profession and the incredible value that you bring to patients and healthcare teams. In conjunction with the other genetic counseling organizations, NSGC will be providing resources and tools so that you can make this day meaningful in your institutions and your communities. Soon, you will be receiving an email that will provide tools for you to use to publicize this event and make it what you want it to be. We encourage you to start planning ahead as it will be up to each individual genetic counselor to determine the best way to utilize those tools to celebrate you and your impact on the patients that you serve. So what's next for NSGC in our profession? When I think about the future, I think about a guy named PJ Fleck. For those of you who don't know, he's the head coach <laughs> at the University of Minnesota. Prior to that, he was the coach at Western Michigan. He is said to be one of the youngest and brightest minds in the game of football, and he gives some pretty incredible advice on sports and life in general. A few weeks ago, my husband sent me a link to a YouTube video where PJ Fleck talks about something he calls rowing the boat. It really resonated with me, so I wanted to share it. When you row a boat, your back is to the future. Can't see it, can't control it. You don't even know what's coming. You don't know what calm seas or what storms are ahead of you. You just continue to keep your oar in the water, in the present, because that's the only thing you can actually control. You decide whether you pull your oars out of the water and quit, or you continue to row the boat. But you are looking at the past, which is the only thing you cannot change, but you can learn from. When you row the boat, everybody's gotta be in one line. Everybody's gotta be rowing in the same direction at the same speed to get from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. So fellow genetic counselors, let's jump in this boat, get in line, coordinate our strokes, and row our boat into the future with courage, purpose, and determination. Thank you for your time today and for allowing me to indulge in this exercise of celebration and gratitude. We've done so much, yet there's so much left to do. So let's keep our oars in the water. Thank you. <laughs>